We had a more lighthearted but spiritual time with the sharks last week. And uh, a lot of that was geared toward a younger generation. So if any kids weren't here and you want to see it, that's available on our archive online, grandkids, uh, friends like that. But there was a lot of spirit, good spiritual parallels, parallels that we made. And so uh, it's for the uh, older folks too. You can enjoy that. The last two weeks have been like 40 hours of preparation for each of these messages beyond the other task, not to say what was me, but um, uh, it's such original content for me uh, that uh, it, it's taken a lot. But today's subject, you may think, why, Pastor? Why take the time to talk about UFOs? Now, if we were talking about my cooking, I could understand it, then it would be an unidentified frying object. Uh, but UFOs uh, in church, well, let me tell you that I believe that aren't pastors called to give the full counsel and not just the things that are easy to hear? Uh, aren't, aren't we supposed to be faithful shepherds like that? So I think today we have a much needed word of caution, of warning, but ultimately blessed assurance because we know the captain of our salvation, amen? And he will pilot us uh, right. Today's message may feel a bit alien at first, but we will land on a solid biblical place. I wanna begin by saying for decades, oh, let me do one more thing. I need, always need to raise this up a bit. For decades, the UFO question has been consigned to the realm of speculation, conspiracy theory, and science fiction. The modern era of UFO sightings began on June 24, 1947, when Kenneth Arnold took off in his personal plane headed for Yakima, Washington. He observed a chain of nine flying, peculiar-looking, flat objects without tails, moving oddly at speeds that were later calculated to be uh, close to 1,700 miles an hour, which, Frank, maybe that's about three times more than what was known to be uh, capable of at the time. Amazing. Well, another pilot claimed he saw the same craft just minutes before Arnold and a witness on the ground saw them flying as well. Now Arnold described them in interviews as moving like a saucer would if skipped across water. He wasn't describing their shape, he was actually describing their what? Their movement, right? However, right then, headlines began describing uh, what we'd come to know as UFOs as flying saucers. That's the origination of it. The term UFO refers to any explained object or light in the sky. It does not refer to an alien being, just an object or light in the sky. Almost all UFO sightings are simply identified as, uh, uh, are simply unidentified flying objects and not alien encounters. So most people do not see some alien when they see these craft or lights in the sky. In 1952, the Air Force coined the term UFO for unidentified flying objects. But Arnold's sighting was just the start. This, is clo this hits closer to home. The next month, in July, an alleged UFO crashed about 80 miles from Roswell, New Mexico. Uh, have any of you ever been down, down there for the festivals that they hold in honor of this event? You have. I, Janet, can I, one of your antenna isn't working. Can you just get the other one up? Very good, okay. Uh, all right. A public information officer at Roswell Army Airfield described the debris as a flying disc 
which ignited a firestorm of confused interest. Army officials quickly retracted, explaining it was the remains of a crashed weather balloon. In fact, decades later, it was declassified and revealed it was more than just a simple weather balloon. Uh, it was debris from a secret balloon project that was developed to spy on Russia's nuclear weapons testing. And they were testing these balloons' capabilities before, but uh, there was an accident. Well, sightings increased to the point, although in all fairness, people, of course, still question uh, the official reports, and uh, I won't get into all that, but that, that, that is the uh, basic idea. But sightings increased to the point where the newly formed Air Force launch, launched the first official inquiry called Project Sign, after which it concluded, the phenomenon is something real and not visionary or fictitious. In other words, something is happening, people are seeing things, but they still were not claiming any alien uh, encounters that were documented. All right, let's go on. The increased sightings reminded Air Force pilots of the strange Foo Fighters, so-called, that several Allied personnel had seen in World War II when crews noticed strange lights that followed their bombers. Two of those are real pictures. One is an artist conception. In fact, a year earlier, a kind of hysteria, mass hysteria, sweeped, gripped Sweden with what they described as ghost rockets darting through the skies and near planes. Some dismissed them as meteors, but witnesses claimed they could maneuver in circles, stop and start on a dime, and some appeared to be shaped like metal cigars. And some of that we will see later is consistent with uh, even current naval descriptions. Then, let's look a little more at the progression of the modern era. Then in July of 1952, UFOs suddenly converged over Washington, D.C. I think they still may be there. Um, some explain them as temperature inversions temperature inversions, but not everyone was convinced. F-94s were scrambled and the order was given to shoot them down if you can't talk them down. Uh, the order was withdrawn because of protests from scientists, but pilots were ordered to pursue the objects while keeping their hands off the trigger. Uh, as you can see, well, I hope you can see, can anyone make out who wrote a little note to the White House regarding this? Okay, good, you can see it. Albert Einstein, I just thought it was kind of funny. He wrote uh, this interesting uh, tagline, I don't know what they are and I don't want to find out. <laughs> Just leave them alone. By the way, those objects returned a week later and they were on radar screens and visible to the naked eye and a pilot pursuing them in his F-104 Starfighter is convinced they were solid, they were real crafts, not just uh, optical illusions. All right, coming up to more recent events. The military has more recently declassified videos that show encounters between American naval aviators and what the Pentagon now label as unidentified aerial phenomenon or UAP. That is the military designation for UFOs, UAP. Here's a screen grab where Navy pilots are following a fleet of UFOs that are speeding against a 138 mile an hour headwind. They are flying uh, at fantastic speeds against them. And one of the crafts uh, rotates without losing any speed or direction. Last year, 
the Department of Defense established a resolution office with the acronym AARO to investigate what are now hundreds of reporting UAP sightings each year. Now, this is all leading up to this. If you've been watching the news, you'll know that a career intelligence officer, whose name I may not get uh, pronounced correctly, David Grush, worked with this UFO resolution office and says he cannot keep silent any longer. So he became a whistleblower claiming the government is in possession of numerous non-human vehicles that have landed or crashed, including bodies of those who were uh, piloting these alien craft. He says some craft are as large as three football fields and says that there have been malevolent events in which humans were hurt. Now, uh, I am not here to opine on any particular incident or these alleged cover-ups or conspiracies. I, I'm not into that. I'm not even into UFOs. I'm doing this because I have a particular pastoral concern that will develop as we go on. But this is not about, hey, don't you guys believe in UFOs and government conspiracies and cover-ups? I'm not into that at all, and I have no fascination with UFOs in themselves. It's a pastoral interest. I am right now, I've been describing the progression of interest that UAPs have come to generate in the modern era. That's all we've established so far. Uh, but let's do a reality check. How many of you believe UFOs are real and that extraterrestrial life is visiting our planet? Who'll be so bold as to uh, Raise your hand. All right, at least one, one. Uh, and I'm not here to whatever, because we could qualify the, we're gonna qualify that. How many do have an opinion, but there's no way you're going to share that publicly? <laughs> All right, that, that, these are the honest folks. All of us have an opinion. We just don't wanna be caught on the wrong. Well, where's the pastor going with that today? You know? Uh, all right, well, we'll see. I will tell you that just a couple years ago, a Pew Research Center survey found that 65% of Americans believe intelligent life exists on other planets. That's a lot, that's a lot. But most aren't worried, 87% believe that UFOs are not a threat, even if a minor one, but one in 10 believe UFOs do present pose a major threat to our national security. Here's what's telling. Younger people are really open to ET. 76% of adults under 30 say intelligent life exists on other planets. That's a huge percentage versus 57% of those 50 and older. And for those who just have to know, among the 50 states, where does New Mexico rank for most sightings among the 50 states? I will tell you that the northern states see far more, report far more sightings than the southern states. So where do you think New Mexico ranks among the 50 for most sightings? Number one would be, it was Iowa, I think, was number one, even though that's a Midwest state. Um, where do you think we rank? Anybody? Anybody? Five. <laughs> Fifth most sightings in the nation. All right. Now, again, why should any of this matter to us as Christians? Again, I'm careful to give the disclaimers. We're not here to discuss um, the fantastic uh, alleged fantasies or realities of UFOs or sensationalism or conspiracies. We're not here to promote that. There's, that. there's no reason for that in church. We're giving you background and we'll try to understand a bit more about them. But uh, 
Here we go. Thousands of worldwide accounts present a pretty consistent picture. And when you compare it to the biblical evidence, we should be concerned about what most likely lies behind some of the UFO phenomenon. And we'll build the case for that. But if there's any reality to them, in my mind, the biggest concern is not just what or who they are, but why they are here. Why are they doing what they're doing? And as I've watched videos, read articles and books, most of what is reported as UFOs can be naturally explained. Many prove to be hoaxes, military activity or secret kind of that, optical illusions, weather related, meteors, satellites, just natural phenomenon that gets misidentified as something alien. What is challenging is the remaining unresolved cases, which ranges anywhere from 1% all the way up to 28, according to the source you're citing. Again, what makes the unresolved cases so difficult is that the eyewitness sightings and videos, even the military videos, defy the laws of physics. That's part of what makes this so difficult. Something is there, but it's hard to grasp uh, because we appear to be dealing with uh, non-physical realities, all right? It's hard to grasp because we appear to be dealing with non-physical realities. Let's first look at UFO craft capabilities and then that will transition us eventually to build a biblical case as to the identity and purpose behind much of these unresolved sightings and encounters. First of all, speaking of breaking the laws of physics, let's, let's look at this. UFOs can see, have been seen to scream through our atmosphere at five to 25,000 miles per hour. Unbelievable. Um, witnesses never report a sonic boom, no engines, exhaust, heat friction, or control surfaces are seen. UFOs can make immediate right angle turns, sudden stops from immense speeds, and impossible rapid accelerations uh, from a standstill. All right? So imagine. Uh, you're going speeding along and then all of a sudden immediate right angle turn. Uh, nothing can do that. N no contrails, no, no jets, no control surfaces. Uh, uh, from standing still to impossible uh, vertical accelerations. Un unbelievable. Also strange, they may be detected by radar but not seen visually or they're seen visually but not detected by radar, that, that dynamic can happen. They can change shape, size, and color at random. They can instantly disappear and reappear, disintegrate and reintegrate. They emit light that casts no shadows. They appear to enter the ground at times without a trace. They've been seen to melt asphalt and metal objects and burn grass and leaves uh, without flame or fire. They've been seen crashing and leaving impressions in the ground, but again, leaving no debris. So nothing physical or material would be able to withstand the immense G-forces created under these uh, movements, speeds, and unexplainable capabilities. That it's just, again, all points to some non-physical reality. It's also helpful to know, I thought this was fascinating, throughout history, UFOs have appeared to people in ways that were relatable to them. Their technology seems to adapt to the people in times they're appearing to. 
in ancient Rome. Numerous witnesses watched a group of what they described as shiny round shields of polished brass, like their war shields moving across the sky. The historian Livy described this as well. Um, in the late 1800s, UFOs began to become more cigar shaped. Why? Because cigar smoking had become so popular and who's ever behind the UFOs knew that they could identify with that kind of uh, shape. Disc and saucers became more common when? In the modern era that we began explaining that began in 1947. In fact, even the alien's appearance and origin has changed to keep up with the times. At first, aliens told people they were from, I bet you can guess, the, well, the first was the backside of the moon. But then we went to the moon, and their story changed to saying they were from Venus, but our probes discovered Venus was too hot to sustain life, so the aliens kept moving their place of origin to keep up with the times. Even their appearance has changed to keep up with the modern perceptions. First, there were reports of little green men in white suits. Where was that uh, popularized? In comic books and on uh, TV shows, things like that. Uh, and then, after close, the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, aliens began appearing with larger oval eyes and gray skin instead of that uh, green skin. Many believe that all the shape-shifting of spacecraft, of their origin and appearance, is to protect their agenda of deception by keeping up with the public's current perceptions. Now, we're ready to open God's word to help us tear away the veil behind the UFO phenomenon and what I personally believe is a deception. Remember, all the evidence uh, shows we're likely dealing with non-physical realities since they break all the laws of physics. Cosmologists like the late Carl Sagan cannot accept non-physical realities. Why not? Because they only accept what the natural material world can produce without God. But true or false, Christians can accept non-physical realities. How many say that's true? Good. Of course, because God is what? God is physical or God is spirit, right? God is spirit. Are angels physical or spirit beings? What does the Bible say of the angels? He says he makes his angels what? Spirits. It is ministers flames of fire. Here's another verse. Are not all angels spirits in the divine service, right? Angels are spiritual beings created by God for the purpose of worshiping him and uh, carrying out his will. They were given the ability to choose to trust the father and his son, but a third rebelled, and in fact, they're often referred to as unclean what? Unclean spirits. Now, while angels are spirit beings, do you think they can appear in some physical form? All right. What does this verse say? Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. And of course, the form the angels would take is the form of people, humans, of a physical form, and, and they would eat. All right? True or false? Even um, fallen angels can appear in different forms. Is that possible? Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, right? And if Satan can disguise himself and appear as a physical talking serpent, could demons appear as aliens from other worlds? How many think that's possible? All right, 
the question at the moment, is it, pro is it not just possible or plausible? Is it probable, right? Well, let's look more at that. First of all, it's no problem for them. We've already seen that uh, all angels can pass back and forth from the spiritual realm to the natural realm because they're not bound by the laws of physics. Now, what has God called angels to do? The word angel literally means what? Messenger. And their greatest mission is to help people to see Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. But Satan has messengers too, doesn't he? And he tries to counterfeit everything God does. So their great task, the great task of the fallen angels, is to do all they can to try to deceive and dissuade sinners from seeing the truth in Christ and gaining freedom and life in Jesus. Does that make sense? Ain't God's messengers the truth of the gospel, life in Christ, life and freedom and truth in Christ. Satan's uh, fallen messengers to deceive and dissuade us from accepting the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus. So let's put this all together. From a biblical view, it makes sense that angelic beings are the only ones capable of all this physics-defying movement and shape-shifting disguise. Is that fair to say? They're capable. We're not certainly capable of that. Now, what evidence do we have that these aliens are fallen angels? Well, just look at their message. People from different countries, backgrounds, and careers seem to share a common experience. Aliens seem to want to rewrite the Bible. Many of these aliens claim they are the creators of life on earth through the process of evolution, not God who created everything supernaturally in six days. Other common messages imply that Jesus himself is just an advanced extraterrestrial, a more highly evolved uh, being who will one day, they claim, he will return in his spaceship with a special message for humanity. But he's a special, highly evolved being, not the unique divine son of God. Um, in his book, UFO in Time Delusion, Dr. David Allen Lewis writes, the UFOs are serving the purpose of social engineering, causing a shift in the perception of mankind, a change in the world view of society this is the biggest con game ever pulled on humanity. How many of you have seen the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Remember that from the 70s, Steven Spielberg movie? Well, do you remember the French UFO expert in the movie? He was a Frenchman. Uh, he had a significant role. Well, actually, it wasn't, it was a lot of fiction in there, but Spielberg based that character upon Jacques Vallée, who is considered the foremost expert on UFOs, and uh, he is a Frenchman. Uh, even he concludes, the UFO phenomenon represents evidence for other dimensions beyond space-time. What we see here is not an alien invasion. He is the most respected, foremost UFO scholar. And he's saying these non-physical realities and phenomena that we're seeing, it's real, but it is not an alien invasion. He's not a Christian, but he says, it is a spiritual system that acts on humans and uses humans. Even he says there is a, a, a spiritual dimension that transcends our physical space-time realities, all right? As Christians, we see right through this false agenda. If this is what's happening, it's easy for us to see through it. You agree? We know what Satan is capable of. Here's the problem. Much of the population is now predisposed to accepting aliens that evolved from other worlds 
And when surveys are done, even many Christian believers say, oh yeah, uh, many Christians believe in evolution today. And they say, oh yeah, um, certainly this can happen. And because if evolution could happen here, why couldn't it happen in other worlds where they've had millions of years to evolve ahead of us? Folks, most of the population, even a large percent of the Christian world, is predisposed to believing in and accepting this, this uh, claim of uh, long-evolved aliens from other worlds. TV, movies, and books about the likelihood of extraterrestrial life and visitation, along with the exponential increase of UFO sightings and encounters, have led the average person to be more susceptible to accepting the alien deception and even looking forward, desiring contacts with them. An American astrophysicist named Alan, Alan Hynek came up with the term close encounters of the first, second, and third kind. In the first kind of encounter, a person is less than 500 feet from the UFO. In the second kind, there's communication, usually telepathic. In the third kind, there's actual contact. And I've got to tell you, because we have a, a, a broad range of ages, I will refrain uh, from describing uh, the, the graphic horrors of, of what people uh, happens to these people, but um, let's just say that contact is often a, a negative, harmful experience resulting in recurring nightmares, psychological trauma, injury, or worse. Abduction is the most controversial part of UFO phenomenon where people are captured by space aliens and taken aboard their spacecraft. This is where the infamous medical examinations and procedures take place. But abductions are called close encounters of the fourth kind. Often, here's what's strange, abductees have no recollection of time passing. They were in their bed, they may have been driving, and they said they cannot account for the last two, three, four hours that have passed. It's often only through hypno hypnosis that they're able to recall the traumatic details. However, we know hypnosis has its own set of problems, and many realize after these sessions that none of the details that came out in hypnosis actually happened. So we can't always trust that. There are Christian-based investigators who do not believe that people are actually taken uh, anywhere during an abduction event. The demons simply create the illusion to perpetrate the deception. So Satan can deceive people. He can deceive people to believe they were taken off into outer space. But he's also able, here's the scary part, to physically wound and injure to reinforce the illusion or the deception. He can also plant thoughts to mislead people that they experience things that actually never occurred. But here's where we need to become more on guard as Christian believers. Some seem predisposed to these more negative encounters and abductions. There is a segment of the population that has a tendency to have more encounters. Uh, and in a word, in fact, there is often a connection between what kind of activity? Occult activity and alien encounters. Uh, in fact, uh, in surveying astrophysicists, scientists, cosmologists, those cosmologists and scientists who have, they may be atheistic, but they have nothing to do with um, spiritualism and occult practice, they never have these encounters. But the scientists and cosmologists who are into the paranormal do have a much higher incidence of these encounters. So that's got to tell you something right there. What would be an example of occultic uh, activity? Uh, 
Can you name some? What's an example? Would the Ouija board be an example? All right, I think most of us are familiar with that. Um, a fascination with the paranormal. Even people who watch a lot of these paranormal shows, it's, it, they have, the Christian investigators have found it acts as a pathway and uh, the demons know that people are more open to this kind of, they're more interested. And so uh, it, it acts as a pathway that seems to invite this kind of encounter. Besides that, after the encounters, many report poltergeist-like activity in their homes, recurring nightmares, demonic-like oppression, severe trauma, as mentioned, and some are hospitalized for burns and other injuries that uh, we won't describe. But when victims, or what they call experiencers, renounce all occult activity, all the alien encounters stop. Well, think about that, folks. Think about this. This is why it's so important to share with you. Um, uh, surveys have been done. There are segments of the Christian church population that is into occultic and spiritual practice. They think it is fun, including Ouija boards and things like that. Um, they, they, th they dismiss the notion that anything uh, evil or harmful could be behind that. Uh, watching these horror films and the paranormal, they think we're not opening ourselves to anything. This is just inter entertainment. But again, I know this is not a fun subject, but um, I wouldn't be a faithful shepherd if I didn't say this does open the doors, uh, if not to alien encounters, you're just simply opening the door to demonic influence itself. And we've got to be uh, uh, on guard and careful about that. But the very fact that, that these alien encounters stop when people renounce occult activity, why would alien evolved beings respect that? No, it's because the pathway has been closed and God is now protecting those people. That, that's why. And so, um, uh, it's a huge clue that fallen beings are behind it all. Christian investigators say that when those who've been abducted, we're talking in the middle of an abduction, when they sincerely call on Jesus, the encounter immediately stops. Isn't that powerful? See, that, that's beautiful. That's the gospel. And this is the gospel part of this. I said there would be a word of caution, warning, but ultimately blessed assurance. Even in this subject, we see the gospel. No wonder Paul said, a few people who call upon the name of the Lord who are worthy enough. Is that what it says? A few who are worthy enough? No. Whoever, whoever in sincerity calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved, shall be protected, shall be delivered. Jesus promised, whoever comes to me, I will never turn away. Isn't that comforting? Doesn't that give you a great sense of security? Well, why does the enemy persist in this elaborate hoax? Well, again, the big agenda is deception. Satan wants to set us up to believe that we don't need God. That's the bottom line of this. We're evolved creatures, and we're here to let you know that you can uh, let us guide you let us be your mentors and guides on this journey so you could experience the higher realm of evolution, the human race. But you don't need God. You don't need a savior um, from sin. Just follow our guidance so you can keep evolving more highly like us. But here's a question that I wrestled with. Why does Satan have to be so scary and cruel as he performs these alien deceptions? Why use the stick instead of the carrot? Why not? Uh, there, are, there, there are rare instances where people walk away saying, you know what? My headaches are gone. My joint pain. I feel good. I feel at peace. This is very rare. It's normally very negative, even harmful, even uh, even worse. Well, here's what I've come up with. First of all, I think Satan, he's the original narcissist. 
So he can't help but to be cruel and harmful overall, right? But his method is consistent with what the aliens teach. If there's no God and we're all the result of mindless evolution, that means there's no what? There's no right or wrong. There's no scale of, of justice and fairness and compassion. It's just survival of the fittest. And the dangerous aliens who can hurt us are proof of that. Look, it's survival of the fittest. And if we hurt, we're showing you what we're capable of and, and how we have come to survive. Their behaviors also send the message that if we want to survive, then we better get in line with whatever they tell us. Do you see that? So the cruel pattern of behavior, the scary stuff, the harmful stuff is in line with what they claim. Survival of the fittest, evolution, and if you don't want to be decimated, follow us and whatever we say. Aliens have promised that Jesus will return in his own craft. Imagine how many could fall for what this false messiah, messiah says while appearing so powerful and authentic from another world. Imagine, you know, what you guys have learned it, it is a little off, this religious stuff and this, that, that I'm a savior, and the, the savior, God's son. No, you've got it wrong. I'm highly evolved and I'm offering the same evolutionary process to you in the human race. That's basically new age teaching. It's just repackaged in the form of uh, the alien deception. Amen. However, there's no need to become preoccupied and fearful of UFOs. There's no light there. Folks, don't go buy a bunch of books thinking if I just study enough about them, I'll be protected and saved. It's like uh, how many counterfeit dollars do you have to spend the rest of your life looking at before you can trust to enjoy going out with some real money, right? Folks, um, uh, I told you myself, I have no fascination. I only studied for this to do my best to present a word of caution, warning, and ultimately hope to you. Uh, while Satan's deceptive cruelty knows no bounds, God, our Heavenly Father, captures us to protect us with his boundless love. Amen? Amen? Satan wants to capture us to bind us up. God wants to capture us to set us free with his boundless love. There's the gospel, folks, right there. I know some are wondering, uh, can good Christians then, after what we've said, can good Christians see UFOs? Can we see them? Let me raise your hand. Yeah, how many say no? You wouldn't see them then. You're not, how many aren't sure? All right. Uh, Satan can appear in all kinds of ways and forms. Um, when at the, uh, let me start over. Yes, good Christians can see UFOs. You're driving along. Um, if Satan dangles a temptation before you, is that a sin? No, it's not a sin, the temptation itself look and, and look at these UFOs and, and ask for a ride uh, to Roswell with them. Try to hitch a ride to Roswell with them. No, that would be a sin. But um, the temptation itself, you see uh, UFOs, no, that's not a sin in itself. Don't worry, you're still a good Christian. Um, it is far less likely for Christians to have an abduction event, as we said. But I know someone out there is saying, Pastor, I just have to know, just suppose, just suppose I'm taken. I want to know. Does it mean I'm not a Christian? Does it mean I've, I've opened some spiritual door that's, uh, and, and I'm lost? Folks, I wouldn't, every case would be different, and I don't know why a particular person would be abducted. I can only tell you that there's a trend that of occultic activity or people fascinated with UFOs who are open to this. But I can say this for sure. Even if you did have an encounter with these so-called aliens, we know that at the name of Jesus, 
every knee shall bow and every tongue confess, even heaven and on the earth and under the earth, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We know that, amen? And what did we say earlier? Everyone who called on the name of the Lord in those Christian uh, UFO investigation studies, those abductions and encounters immediately ceased. They immediately stopped. Look at the power in the name of Jesus. Look at the power in his holy, wonderful, beautiful, all-powerful name. So call out to Jesus and uh, God will deliver you. And I love this verse, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Paul says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor what? Demons. Nor demons, um, uh, nor any powers, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I don't care how powerful the demons are or their deceptions or their brainwashing or uh, their uh, apparent ability to injure some. We are protected by the blood of Christ. And uh, uh, what do you take away from this? Well, certainly don't open pathways uh, that open yourself up to being predisposed to uh, uh, either these UFO phenomenon or anything that leads uh, to more openness where Satan has more influence in your life. So it's not just, I better be good so I don't meet a little green man. <laughs> it's, I want to be good because I love Jesus. I want to be good because I'm in love with him. I want to be good because being close to my Savior is the greatest experience and the benefits are truly out of this world with Jesus, right? So we want to stay close to him, not out of fear of demons or out of fear of aliens, but out of love for Christ, Amen. because nothing can separate us from him. I hope you see that uh, this is the only UFO message you'll get from me. Uh, again, this is not my fascination. It is a public service announcement. <laughs> uh, because I care about the welfare of my flock, and I'm just the under shepherd. It's God's flock, and the good shepherd cares for you, and I've done my best just this one time to give you uh, an appeal and a heads up. Now, uh, just for a little bit of fun, this has been very serious. Um, uh, I do want to close uh, with a hit song, hit song, that from the 60s that um, uh, I wrote that uh, I, I, I think some of you may remember it. Uh, a lot of you may not know uh, my writing skill for this hit song. And I'll just sing the first line. Are you ready? Because I cannot sing. I, I, I can write, but I cannot sing. But the song goes, um, God didn't make little green Martians. And they don't land in Indianapolis in the summertime. And when I start to feeling low, I just hop on board and off we... No, wait. No, no, that's not the song. I'm sorry. I think, I'm, I think there's a barnacle on my boomer brain. Um, no, had I written that song, though, forget platinum. I think it would have gone vibranium. I think uh, that's how high that song would have gotten. But... Something else we did right. Maria helped me come up with some rhyming words. On my way to the nominating committee, I said, honey, I want to write a poem. I don't know if it's a rap. I don't know if it's just rhyming words. I'm not into that. I don't know. But I want to write a little poem because it's a serious subject, but yet uh, for the kids, for the sake of the kids that, that they could relate to about UFOs and Jesus. So... Uh, we just thought of words that could rhyme, and then yesterday I wrote a poem to act as the appeal for today, and this is for the kids. No need to search the skies for UFOs. Jesus is all you need to know. A scary flight to outer space is nothing compared to God's great grace. Don't need an alien to mess with sin. Call on Jesus. He'll fill you in. 
listen to God's instructions so there'll be an interruption to your abductions. <laughs> Jesus will take you oh so far, you won't need to go to Mars. He's not just in the atmosphere, Jesus is your friend right here. Board the flight he's planning soon, our heavenly home outshines the moon. The saucer author can never beat the Savior's offer. If Jesus is the captain of your salvation, let's stand together to sing, I'll fly away to Jesus and his everlasting arms.